So with jQuery and jQuery Mobile, we are able to very quickly create um, these designs and layouts and such. It's still up to us to populate the content, of course. There's nothing out there that will do that for us. Uh, so yes, of course, we could do all of this from scratch. You know, we just need to read about three 600-page books or so, and we'll learn all of this, and then we'll be able to get started. Or we'll deal with these frameworks that are already defined and pre-built. We just need to learn how they work and apply them to what we need. So right now we've got a page one, we've got a page two. There's still a lot to do, of course, a lot to learn. And for example, um, the layout and such. It's just simply a screen full of content section, home section about. I want to make it look a little nicer. So we'll get back to our code. Oftentimes with any sort of app, it is, def it is uh, delineated into different uh, elements on screen. Let's say if this was my app, I probably have, you know, the logo of the, of the app at the top and content here and some other content, maybe sidebars and all of that. We still can define some layout to this. We don't have any layout defined yet. Simply one section and another section. We don't have any layout. So let's back up to uh, right after our section data role page. Let's add a new line there. And this time we will add... Uh, another HTML5 tag. This one is called header. Header. There's a tag here that is supposed to define content that appears up on the head, the top of the document. Header. This is just HTML5. It's not jQuery, jQuery mobile. Header is just HTML5. Um, I want to, one more time, I want to move this hello world actually up to the, the header. We'll see a little bit later why. Header, heading one, hello world. Right now, header has no visual meaning. It has a conceptual meaning, a semantic meaning, which is it should be at the top of the document. Visually, it doesn't have much definition. So guess what? Data roles come into play. We had data role to define the, the whole page attached to section. We had, we're going to have a new data role attached to header to define this to make it look like a top header section. This one's an easy one. It's data role header. There is no page tag that goes along with data role page. But there is a header tag and a data role of header. Save it and run this. Let's see what you get. So we're adding the structure tag and an attribute that is defining its presentation. That should look like this. A section at the top, divided from the rest. Text is centered. And that's from data role header. So that text that I wrote there, hello world, as a heading one, it's placed on the screen and it shows up. Uh, oftentimes in our apps we might have a top header section, a central content section, and a bottom footer section. Guess what? We have tags and data roles for that. We have HTML and jQuery for that. So after header we're going to create a brand new tag called article. The reason it's not exactly named like content or whatever is because there's so many groups out there trying to create the best solution. And yes, there are governing bodies and standards and all of that, but the problem with a standard is that everyone can create a standard. Anyone can create a standard. And so the team behind HTML5 was trying to create tags that would serve a new purpose because people would use the generic div 
tag. I think we mentioned divs briefly previously, div, divs. Divs are just basic invisible containers. They have no meaning. And over, you know, several years of research, uh, it was determined people are often creating a div and giving it an ID or a class of header, <coughs> creating a div and giving it an ID or a class of footer, creating a div and giving it an ID or a class of content. People were seeing this over and over and over. So then the HTML5 team said, well, let's just create a tag called header or a tag called footer for that purpose. It's still up to you to define what it looks like, but now we've got a tag for a purpose. So the team, from my understanding, had it more in mind about like a uh, traditional print. You're reading a newspaper, remember those things. You're reading a magazine, and there was a section in the newspaper. The A section, the B section, the sports section, and then there was a particular article in that section. So the team then said, that's what we'll use. Articles, sections, headers, footers. So that's why article doesn't quite make sense, perhaps, in what we're doing. We're making an app, not writing a newspaper article. But we're using article, and then we're giving it these attributes to make it behave like a real page. This is one of the funky ones. This is one of the ones that doesn't follow the specification. Now, don't write this, but it does exist data role equals content. Don't write this. This is apparently deprecated, meaning that's old. That works, but it's not the preferred way you want to do it anymore. So I just bring it up, but we're not going to do that way. We're going to do it this other way that I always forget how to do it also, and I have to look it up. I'm still used to data role content. But the way we need to do it is we have uh, role main, not data role role main, and then we have class UI-content. Yes, I also don't know why they didn't keep it data role equals content. But this is the right way. This is what the official documentation says. This is the way we'll do it. So this is an article. Its role is that it's the main content area. And this has a class, ID class. This is the only place that we're going to see something like this. There's, a, there's an article, there's the main section, there's the main part of the app. And its class is UI-content. UI-content. Notice exactly how it's spelled. You have to uh, spell it exactly that way. Inside of the article, let's write an H2 and say home. And then I'm going to move that href into the article. So that link that was kind of hanging around, it should have been in an article in the main section. Again, we're going to unfortunately step over our toes with the right word, because section is a whole screen full of content. It's such a generic word. I don't exactly mean section. I mean in the main content area. This stuff should be in the main content area. We're going, to have, we're going to have a header at the top, a footer at the bottom, and what's in the middle? The content area. The article of role main class UI dash content. Save it and run it. Here's the difference. Oops, I lost something here. Here's the big difference. Here's before, here's after. It's subtle, but do you notice there's a nice little bit of breathing room on the edge here. Before adding that role of main and UI content, it bumped up right to the edge. It seemed a little bit off. Now, with, a, with an article tag and the class, it gives us some breathing room. All of this can be edited, of course, like these boring colors. We'll get to that later. But here we're building then the main contents, content area of the app. Home and the link. So we've got header, article, footer. Let's define the footer tag, the footer pair. We saw footer before. 
we saw it wasn't very impressive when we used it. Now we'll make it impressive. Data role equals footer. And then the content in the footer will be heading 4. We'll just say, I don't know, copyright 2016, heading 4. Check out what that looks like. footer data role equals footer, some sort of content, pictures, text, links, whatever, but I'm putting a heading 4, h4, and the way that should look like is like this, so header, content, footer. Automatically centered, it's got a color in the background which we can edit later. It's not exactly at the foot of my document, which would be at the bottom, but we've got an attribute for that. Data role footer, and now data dash position fixed. So that will take your footer and now fix it, position it at the bottom of the document, at the bottom of the screen, at the bottom of the viewport. Always automatically. That would have required a lot of CSS tricks in the old days to get it to work. It's built in. You just add data position fixed to the footer, for example, and it's down on the foot. No matter the size of the browser. No matter the amount of content in the UI content, the main content area. Like that footer before, floating around there, based on what content is in the middle, with position fixed at the foot. If I resize my browser, it's always at the bottom. This is getting us to be a very mobile-friendly project. Right now, you might have your, your, your web browser maximized the whole way like that, and it still sticks wherever. If you resize your browser a little bit, maybe, you know, different sizes, tall and thin like a phone, wide like a tablet. That's eventually where this is going to end up. On a small device, on a medium device, on a large device. All of this is built for that. Mobile friendly. It's responsive. jQuery Mobile has that built in. If you took our other classes and learned about CSS breakpoints and all of that, that still applies here, but this is done for us. If you didn't take the other classes and don't know about CSS breakpoints, don't worry about it too much. This takes care of it to a large degree. H1, H2, H4. This is using those heading tags as they're supposed to be used in a hierarchy. The very first content at the top of the screen, heading 1. The subsequent content, heading 2. The last content, usually, heading 4. Um, you may have put within the main content heading to home, heading three welcome, heading four contactless. So then of course this would be a heading five. I would not repeat those headings because the meaning of them is that they are in the appropriate section. I wouldn't also put a heading one here. Heading one, heading one here, that wouldn't be semantically correct. The meaning of this is that it should be above the header and then the other headings, and then the final heading. Now we do have a heading 1 on page 2, and that's okay because it's a whole different section independent of the top section. So that's okay there if I've got heading 1, 2, 3, 4 also. We can use them again because they're separate sections. Question? Suppose H4 is less than, smaller than H1, why The default is oftentimes that heading 4 is often smaller 
and less prominent than heading 1. That's default HTML. But because jQuery Mobile CSS has redefined it as the same size, that's why it looks the same. Conceptually and semantically, though, you know, this is the topmost element, this is the bottommost element. That one does look a lot larger than that. If we want to redefine what this is doing, we would need to then write some custom CSS. But what's happened is that the jQuery mobile CSS has made it look like this. And we can change it to what we want exactly a little later. Okay. So that means like H2 will read the article were bigger than H1 in the tag. Yes. If H4 is the shorter, will bigger one than H1 in the tag. I believe it's the same. It's just that this is more text. But I believe it's the same size, the same points. The same. H4 is seen as H1. Yes. It's the same because it's seeing that we've got some sort of heading in the footer. Therefore, it defines it that way. If we change that to also a heading 2 down on the footer, it will be as small because of the other things there. See, it's the same thing. Because it's seeing there's some heading in a footer. Let's display it a certain way. And that's jQuery Mobile CSS. Then later we can say, okay, actually, let's rewrite some code and write, you know, footer, h2, font size, 17 pixels. So we can redefine it later. But this has a lot of things built in for us. That does save us a lot of effort. And we will see some things here and there that, well, how do we change it? I want to change that. We will change that. Right now it's a very basic project. But basic, look how far we've come in you know, two days. If you were here two days, your third day, look at how far we've come so far. This is your very first day, and you haven't had any experience in HTML. Look at how far you've come also. So, we've got headings, we've got articles, we've got footers. Very, very cool. I click on go to page two, and I have none of that. Well, of course not. I didn't program that on page two. I didn't program that. I didn't write that in heading two. Heading 2, I mean section 2, about section, still is basic. <coughs> Nothing. This is one of the drawbacks of this, however. Um, it's not exactly, at the moment, a template system that we can apply all of these headings and footers throughout the whole project. We've got two pages. It's not so bad to copy and paste or, or to write it in. It's going to be not so fun when we've got 20 screens of content. Um, this the way that we're doing it. Again, it's the it's the hard way. It's it's the long way that we do it manually. Later, we can talk about more shortcuts and such. But the default is this. It doesn't do anything unless you tell it. Uh, and there is a system where we can make things, you know, spread out to the other screens, the other sections. Right now, we're using jQuery one four five. Eventually, one five zero is coming, and it's supposed to address some of these shortcomings. At one point, this was, you know, at 1.0. It was at 0 0.9. It was way more clunkier, less usable. It's been evolving. When I was teaching this class, I think we started at 1.2. And I've seen it evolving and it's better and better. And it's at 1.45. It's been at 1.45 for kind of a while, which is weird. At least a year and a half. And that's a long time for web standards. So that when finally we get 1.5, it's probably going to be a huge change. I'm going to have to learn a bunch of new things and teach a new generation of students. But for the moment, our 145 doesn't have every single feature that we might want. And that's OK. Practice. Let's define our section, our about section, properly. We're going to need a header, a footer, an article. Yes, we can copy and paste and cheat. Let's not cheat yet. Let's create in the second section a header. an article, and obviously copying and pasting is not cheating, I'm just being glib. But this is the basic structure, sections, screens of content, with headers, articles, and footers. And actually some of this is optional. Not every single app that you see out there has a footer. I think, um, you know, many apps just have the header and the content where you can keep scrolling. You don't need the footer, but let's just get practice with these basic you know, uh, 
layouts on the header. Well, that's a data dash role of header. The footer, data dash role of footer. Those are going to be two easy ones to remember. Header is data role header, footer is data role footer. Section is data role page. And another one that you'll have to remember as well will then be the article, which is role main and class UI dash content. We'll see later that in the header and the footer we can put a variety of things like links and icons and such. But oftentimes, very basically, we can just put a, a heading, a heading one and a heading four. So I'm going to make some space up here after the header and move the page two text up there. In the footer, H4. We can use the footer, you know, as a little status bar down there. So make it say something else like um, account activated. We can make it dynamic later, but let's say that's we're using it down there like a little status section. And then in the article, just anything else, just some content. We'll do H2 because we've already used H1. And we will say uh, H2 is our about screen. We'll say, I don't know, um, about the company a paragraph. One screen full of content, second screen full of content, divided from each other with data rolls of page. And then the detail in between. Say that about that. Now you'll see that you have a little bit more visual interest than we want. All right, so if you got this far, uh, you have your home section.
with a button, and then it goes to the About section. There's my stuff there. Whoops, I forgot to fix that down to the bottom. Again, it doesn't do anything unless you're specific sometimes. I wasn't specific about that, so this is going to be up here based on the amount of content that is there. Let me show you something before I fix that. I'm going to put in a bunch of paragraphs of gibberish. Just a bunch of gibberish. And now if I go to page 2, and my footer's gone. Well, the default is that it's at the bottom of your content. It scrolls away. So based on the amount of content that you have, without specifying data position fixed, the footer will scroll away. If I have all of that amount of gibberish oops, on my... If I have all that amount of gibberish on my... Uh, main uh, section, I scroll and it keeps, it stays down there. It's fixed. Not only does position fixed put it down at the bottom, but it also sticks it there. <coughs> but if I scroll, it stays there. Very cool. But then I'm seeing something else. Do you see it? Hello World now is scrolling away. When I scroll down here, Hello World is scrolling away. Data position fixed can also be added to the header to prevent that. So you can do this if you'd like. I'll go back to header, data roll header line 19. I'll also add data dash position equals fixed. I have a bunch of gibberish there. And then now when I scroll, only the stuff between the header and the footer scrolls like a real app. You often want to do this to your header or footer, add data dash position fixed. You can get some different sorts of designs and effects if you don't. But I'm going to say I do want my footer fixed. Now that I've got some more content, maybe you can change your transition. We had f I left it as flow. Remember, we had flip, which I said wasn't that impressive. But now with more content, more stuff, flip looks like that. Little flip. So at this point, I've got a I've got a home and an about screen. I can I can go from the home to the about screen easily. I've got the back button here to take me back. It animates it. We're not going to rely, however, on having a back button because eventually this will be an app. And uh, on an, on the Android device, you do have the universal back button. And on a Windows phone, this is a Windows phone. You have the the back button. On the iPhone, you don't have a back button. You have the home button, which will jump you out of your app. So we shouldn't be relying on the back button of the browser because eventually this is not going to be a website. It's going to be an app. It's going to be a universal app, cross-platform app. We want our app to be downloaded by all people. And not everyone's going to have a back button on their phone. So we should program a way to go back without relying on the back button. We can make a button to take us back to the home screen. We'll do that in a moment, but let's look at this way instead. We can make a built-in basic back button, a button that is just designed to go back. Let's go to your About section. In the About section, on the header, we've got the data role attribute, the data position attribute. We're going to add another data attribute. So data dash whatever. That's HTML5. And then role, position, etc. That's jQuery mobile. 
these data attributes are like generic, anyone can invent these. I can invent one called data-victor and make it do something when I define what does that mean. So data position and data role and all of that stuff it's, was defined by the jQuery mobile team to mean this and mean that and do this and do that. So it's a mixture of HTML5 and jQuery mobile. Here's one more. This is a funny this is a pretty funny one. We're going to add data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. Add that to the header of your about section. I'm going to check out what it does. So that particular attribute, its sole purpose, I'm on one screen, I go to another screen, its sole purpose is just to take me back. Again, don't assume that the person's web browser or device will have a back button. So we have to build in to the app itself some way to go back, that back button. All that does is it goes back one history state. It's nicely defined on the top left corner where you might expect it. It's got a built-in icon and a word. All of that can be edited but by simply saying data-add-back-btn. I don't know why they didn't just fully spell it out. They spelled everything else out. True. But then it gives us the back button up there. Sometimes I see people do this, and they say, my back button doesn't work. I, I see people write their code, refresh it, and like, my back button doesn't work. Well, did you see what I did was I refreshed on the page 2. There's no history to go back to. I refreshed on page 2 here. There's no back. I have to refresh on page 1, then go to page 2. Now there's a history to go back to. If I'm here and refresh here, there's no history to go back to goes away. That really won't happen often in a real app, that you're in a particular page, that you jump to it and without any history, so... But there are ways to get around that, like a nav bar, a real navigation bar. This is just one way to do this feature of history. Here's something uh, you might have noticed in my case. I've got a lot of content that I can scroll through and my f header and footer are fixed. But look at this, if I scroll down some amount like here and tap or click anywhere in the content, my header and footer goes away. You might not see this unless you have content, unless you actually scroll down. But built in, jQuery Mobile has the ability for you to hide the header and footer. Maybe, you, maybe you've got a lot that you want the person to see. They can tap and those headers and footers go away like full screen mode. Built in. That can be deactivated with a little bit more code. And you might not see the result. If I'm at the very top and I click it, only the footer goes away. Because I'm at the very top, this, it can't s slide away further than that. So the footer goes away. But if I'm at the very bottom, I'm at the very bottom, so now the header goes away. And then when I'm somewhere in the middle, they both go away. Maybe I don't want that at all, then I'd have to change the default behavior of jQuery Mobile. Just like the default behavior is that heading, uh, that elements, headings inside the headers and footer are smaller than elements in the main content. I can redefine all of that. But as a starting point, this is all very cool. Out of the box, I can do a lot very quickly. Out of the box, we have a very boring gray and light gray and dark gray design. We have two basic built-in designs or uh, color palettes that we can activate. 
and we can define our own, of course. Because our app, I don't want it to be this boring. I want it to have my cool company colors. We'll do that later. But let's say we wanted to activate the alternate design, the alternate theme. That's another data attribute. Let's back up to the very, very top to... Let's back up to the section where, <coughs> where the home section starts. We're going to add a new attribute here. And I'm going to show you this in my particular way. It doesn't matter how you do this, but I'm going to try to teach us to remember to always add the ID or the class as the last attribute. We've got section, data role attribute, ID attribute, role attribute, class attribute. This is optional, and it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to teach us, well, let's always keep the ID and the class last, so that when we're editing our code and we need to change it, we can quickly get to it, and we can quickly see it. Because as, when we have a 500-line project, and I'm scrolling around quickly, it's going to be the last, the last item in the line instead of it being somewhere hidden inside of within the whole line of code, like role. So we're going to add a new attribute to section before the ID. So between data role page and ID, we'll add a new attribute, and this one will be data-theme equals B. B is in boy. Save it and run it. See what you get. Data dash roll, data dash theme, data dash transition, etc. And in this case, data dash theme. So when you save and run that, Look at that. Brand new design. Again, that'd be a lot of CSS. I'd have to define what the P tags look like, what the H1 tags look like, what the body tag looks like, but all of that simply with data uh, theme B. We've got theme A, we've got theme B. Theme A is the default. There's a lot of defaults built in. A is the default. We activated B. And then notice, you go to page 2. We never said anything about page 2. So it's still the default. Again, most likely in jQuery Mobile 1.5, this will be a lot easier to kind of have it uh, trickle down to all sections of your of your page, of your project. And right now we've got two two screens, so it's not so bad to fix. But when we've got 20 screenfuls, we've got a dynamically generated app that creates a brand new section via JavaScript. Then it could get a little hairy. And yes, if we are a little bit more advanced in JavaScript, we can use JavaScript to do a lot of this for us, but that's still getting more complex. So right now my app has two separate colors. If I want both of them the same, then I have to go over to the About section and before the ID, data-theme equals B. Built in, there is only A and B. A is the gray, B is the black. In older versions of jQuery Mobile, 1.3, 1.2, there used to be, I think, six different colors. There was a yellow theme, and I think a blue theme. But it's sort of not that necessary, because that yellow was not the yellow of your company logo. It was a yellow decided in a committee. That blue was some blue that someone liked in the jQuery mobile team, not the blue of your company. So it didn't matter that there were six colors to choose from, none of them were right. None of them were your colors. I'm just showing you here, we will be able to define very quickly the theme of any single page or element that we want. And we'll see how to do it later. They'll all be defined in a theme A, B, C, D, all the way up to Z. We can have 26 different color designs in our app. It'll be very Chaotic, sure, but we can have, you know, more uh, 
you know, more realistically, three color designs, perhaps, two color designs, and we can activate them as necessary, A or B or C. And actually, this, because we added it to the section, in this case, data theme A did trickle down into everything in its section. So, if I change my mind and say header in the about section, data dash theme equals A, everything is going to first become data theme B, trickles down, and then we're going to say only make the header now back to theme A, and everything else stays as B. So I added the data theme A on page 2. And then the rest is theme B. So you can apply data theme to just about any other element. Maybe you want that, maybe you want the main body black, so you did the data theme B onto role of main and left everything else default to A, or vice versa. Maybe, as we'll see later, our theme builder. We'll use the theme builder to design our own colors, like blues and purples and all of that. And then I will add those colors specifically to different elements of my design. Data theme C. I can define my own theme later. Right now, if we try C, nothing happens, because it's not been defined. Only A and B. It's a, it's a good moment to um, write some comments here. We've been writing a lot of code, and I've been explaining it, but let's go in and write some comments. Uh, we wrote the comment about section, what that does. Write a quick comment. We'll back up to about line 19 or so, where I wrote my first header for my first section. I'll write an HTML comment here, and we'll say, header is the topmost element of the design. So the, the meaning of header is that it should be at the topmost part of the design. Data position fixed keeps the header or footer from scrolling away. Notice you can use the, the comments like I'm doing here. I'm dividing them up into multiple lines. That way I can write little chunks of comments. Make sure you've got the opening and closing tags. If you forget to, if you forget to close the tag properly, everything becomes green and everything becomes a comment and everything becomes deactivated. So, <coughs> article with role main and class UI content is the main content area of the app. Usually use H2 and H3 
inside of it. So we can back up to the top here and say usually use h1 inside. We'll see obviously when we talk about the footer, we'll usually use h4 down there. Might be useful to say here that uh, any uh, a tag uh, can be upgraded to a button with data role equals button. <coughs> then more data attributes. effects and styling. footer are used to put content at the very bottom of the screen. Can be fixed. Often use H4. covers it. One uh, little thing here also. Data add back button true. Oh, and then the data theme. So we can comment that. Use data add back ETM to create a simple back button based on the history of the user's clicks. So it's, it's only built in to just take you back one spot from where you came from. If you want more complexity, we have other things to work with. Um, for, uh, for example, a nav bar. You often have that in a particular app. You've got the Facebook app, and you've got the button for the timeline, and you've got the button for your photo albums, and you've got another button for whatever. You're able to jump between all of those items and those menu items that are always available to you. We'll, we'll look at one a little bit later, data role nav bar. Um, that needs more setup. <clears throat> we'll get to it. So we've just got this basic data add but back button. And then data theme to change the to change from the default basic color palette. can define up to 26 different color palettes, A to Z. That's a good amount of uh, comments. 
Any questions so far? General questions? We'll do help in a little bit, but any general questions? Okay, um, let's save our work. We'll do our last break. Uh, it's 8.21. We'll be back at 8.31. We'll look at a few more things, then we'll, we'll call it a day. Uh, I'll put my copy of this code in the folder again if you'd like a copy. And we'll be back at 8.32. Uh,